Hello, everyone. My name is Alessandro Pilotti. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, migrating workloads from VMware to OpenStack, okay? How many of you guys have a VMware environment? Okay. How many of you have an OpenStack environment? Yeah, good. That was a kind of a rhetorical question since we are an OpenStack summit, but hey. Okay. So, so first, one important thing. So this is actually a very short lightning talk. Well, it's like 10 minutes, but we have another full session tomorrow that's actually about the same identical topic. So this is kind of like the teaser that, that will basically explain a little bit of the concept that we will be able to talk a little bit more in depth tomorrow with demos and everything else, okay? 5.30 p.m., room AMR 312, okay? Okay. So the context. Um, how many of you guys are moving from VMware to OpenStack? I mean, migrating workloads, okay? Okay, good. So a lot of people are asking how to do it, uh, what is the best approach, uh, and if they decide actually to move the entire virtual machines, how should they automate all the process, okay? So that's something that we, we went into a lot of times in our, in our career, let's say, doing OpenStack, as probably lots of you know us from, uh, uh, you know, the, the Windows-related workloads in OpenStack, right? So that's where we started, and that's where we, we arrived at doing this specific type of activities. So there are quite a lot of options that you will see pretty soon. Um, the important part is that companies are moving from a traditional way of, uh, of um, interpreting, let's say, the way in which operations have to run in a company to to modern way, let's say, a DevOps way of doing it. Let's say the, the path that we are having is from physical servers, VMs, so that's what happened typically now uh, 10 years ago or more, and then from VMs to infrastructure as a service, which is actually the part we are interested with in this moment. So by VMs, in this case, I mean VMware System Center, you know, so traditional virtualization, to say so. And infrastructure as a service, in this case, is OpenStack, right? Then from there, we do cont containers, and of course, what most people talk about today is the serverless model. No? So applications which don't rely at all on something which re resembles somehow a server. Think about a um, Azure service fabric or things like this. Um, the typical thing that everybody will tell you if, um, if you ask them, hey, how should they move to OpenStack? The answer is, well, you, re you rewrite your applications, which is very easy to say but a little bit more complicated if you have like 20 years of investment in some land of business applications, no? In the end, what we care about is to improve your total cost of ownership, right? The OTCO. So why migrating workloads? Well, TCO, as we just said, you might have a new on-premise cloud infrastructure. So you simply have some old hardware, you move to some new hardware, to some new hardware, and you have, you know, some new technologies that you want to deploy there. Um, you might move uh, from on-prem to public cloud, you know? So th when the public cloud arrived, a lot of companies moved workloads to, from on-premise, let's say physical servers or Windows machines, or virtual machines to, um, uh, to Amazon, for example, or to Azure, or, okay, now to Oracle Cloud, GCE, and so on. Um, vice versa, you might have public cloud to on-premise. There are a lot of reasons to do that. And, of course, you might also have an on-premise redeployment. So a lot of people are asking, well, I have OpenStack, let's say, Kilo. How do I do move to, to Mitaka, to Newton, to Okata, or to Pike tomorrow, no? So the uh, migrating from or moving from one, one version of the other of OpenStack, uh, and the next contiguous version, so let's say from Newton to Okata, for example, it's well documented and relatively easy, okay, quote unquote. But moving from a, 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 a version which is older gets more and more complicated, to the point that moving from, for example, from Kilo to Newton, it's an absolute nightmare. Okay, unless you want to do all the intermediate steps. So we have uh, quite a lot of companies which come to us and say, well, how, how do I do that, you know? And then I will show you some of the options that we have in mind. So I took this picture actually from Stephen Orba from Amazon because I think it's very clear and um, on, on what you can do from, from, um, from a migration perspective. Um, I will get into details tomorrow about the various options, but uh, let's just say that the ones that we are caring about are uh, the replatforming and rehosting. Replatforming basically means you take your applications and you retransform them in something else. Think about the pass containers and something else. Okay? Again, we have only 10 minutes, so tomorrow we'll get into details on here, but for now, just take it as an option. Rehosting consists in taking your virtual machines 
moving them to the target and put them there, no? which is what we are talking about during this uh, very short session. Coriolis is the project that we did for that. It's called, called Migration as a Service. It's a fully automated lift and shift migrations from and to any cloud slash virtualization solutions. So it's not limited only to VMware and OpenStack. It can do a lot of other things. It's meant to be scalable, so doing one migration or a thousand at the same time, really it doesn't matter. Well, honestly, if you just have to migrate one machine, well, you can do it manually, right? If you have to do a thousand, well, probably your time is better invested in doing something else. It has, a, it has to have a fully REST API for full automation, so it has to look and feel like an OpenStack service. And it has to have a keystone identity management because most probably it will have your users, tenants, and so on. So here is how the architecture works. So this is taken from our website, cloudbase.it. You have a REST API. Um, you have a, a, a client, which is, a, of course, a common line or a GUI that I will show tomorrow. Um, then you have Keystone that will provide you, of course, a, a, a token after you get successfully authenticated. And then from there, all the internal components are talking via MQP. No? So you go to a conductor, the conductor will talk to a scheduler, and, all, and then the conductor will talk to some workers. The worker processes will talk to a source cloud and a target cloud. In our example, to VMware and to OpenStack. Okay. Um, supported cloud virtualization solutions, well, OpenStack, any hypervisor, Azure, AWS, vSphere, uh, Hyper-V and System Center, Sense Server, OVIRT, Oracle VM, and we'll add also GC pretty soon. Um, how to use it? Well, there is a command line interface, as we already mentioned, and a web UI. Again, demo tomorrow. And uh, let me go back to the diagram for a little bit of additional explanation here. So what's happening is basically the, the initial worker will connect to the source machine, to the source or environment, ask information about the virtual machines you want to migrate, get all the details about, for example, the disks which are attached, the networks and everything, and pass it on to the worker on the target. The worker on the target will recreate the volumes, for example, in OpenStack for each one of those disks, and there will be a process that can either take the entire disk, convert them on the fly, for example, from VMDK to QCOW2 and send them on the other side, or, um, in a smarter way, it can use a temporary virtual machine running here, fully automated, that will receive the data streamed over SSH here and it will DD them directly into disk here. So that's actually the most fastest approach we have, as you will see pretty soon. Secrets are stored in Barbican, so no password for connecting to source or target cloud will be leaked. Additionally, there is another thing that will allow you to uh, have disaster recovery as a service. This consists in uh, using the backup API that the source cloud can provide you to extract the data and move them to the other side, okay? So for example, in VMware case, we use change block tracking. So we take a snapshot, which is typically app consistent, and we ask VMware to give us only the blocks that changed since the previous replica process, how we call it. No? We take those data, we move them to the other side, and then we are pretty much done. The last thing that we do is what we call internally OS morphing. So what's happening basically is that you have a full copy of your data on the target side, but that machine will not be able to boot because it's configured to run on VMware. So it won't be configured to run on, on, on KVM on the other side, okay? So sorry if I go very fast in explaining these things, but again, the time is short. Again, tomorrow we will talk into details about this. What's happening now is the OS morphing part. We boot a temporary VM, it's attached to, uh, we attach those disks, those volumes, and uh, we run some uh, scripts inside of the VM which will look into the disks. Mount all the possible partitions, even if you have LVM or whatever else, and, and look for an operating system. And then based on the operating system that this process will find, execute a given series of commands. So let's say that, for example, we find um, a Red Hat 7 or a Windows 2012 for 2 or an Ubuntu 16.04 or whatever else, no? we will perform a given set of operations. For example, for Red Hat, we will rebuild all the initer this because it will have the virtual IO drivers on one side and you have the VMware tools on the other. We remove the VMware tools, 
Um, we reconfigure the networking so that the interfaces will have the same name. We reconfigure SE Linux so that the machine will be able to boot. We will inject cloud in it because, of course, you don't have it on the source. And a lot of steps. Imagine if you Google for how do I migrate, um, how do I move a machine from VMware to, to OpenStack, um, you will find all these steps, which here are fully completely automated. Okay, that, that's the main idea. I will show you a demo tomorrow if you guys will join. Of course, it will take some time to run it. Last thing, and then we are done. Um, you can do validation and testing so that to make sure that your machine will run. And you will be able to have a full business continuity because the machines on the source cloud are continuously working because the backup operation will not oblige you to shut down the machine. And with this, I ran out of time. <laughs> so thank you, guys. <laughs>